Okay everyone, welcome back to uh, this is the first part uh, of the Curtis P40B Warhawk build and that's the Airfix um, 148th kit and uh, this is the scheme I'm picking, so it's a famous scheme um, RT Smith uh, from the Flying Tigers Squadron over in China um, I got a real thing for the uh, Flying Tigers, uh, I really enjoy the, the whole story and the idea behind it and the American Volunteers group. Um, actually, whilst building this, I listened to an audio book about that. Forget the name, I'll see if I can stick a picture up uh, at this point. Um, that uh, really sort of helped um, get me going for, for the subject, I must admit. So it's a good thing, I'd, I'd recommend anyone, if you're going to do a subject... Uh, build something and you're building it on a specific subject, you know, try and give it a bit of historical background. It's it's really good hearing about them and all the stories. There were some amazing things that went on over there. So uh, into the build, this is what would be classed as Tamiya's good, uh, Tamiya? Uh, Airfix is um, good plastic, I suppose. Uh, it's the more harder plastic. It's that kind of um, brownie grey sort of colour and um, it does work a lot better than their usual kind of white bluish soft plastic that they do so uh, happy with that that's always a good thing uh, now the cockpit is extremely detailed and what I like about this kit as well is it's one of the main ones in this scale that get it right so that cockpit floor is curved like it should be as in the top of the wing um, and we've also got quite a lot of sidewall detail and we've got two different chairs. Uh, this one has a specifically different chair, the squared back chair, not the rounded chair. Uh, and you get both. Uh, so that's very useful. Um, I, was, I was very happy with that. And uh, we've got some ejector pin marks on here that I was showing there, so I just sanded them back. And also a bit of burring on um, all of those bars. So uh, just using Tamiya Extra Thin, after a little bit of scraping, whatever's left, so just running a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin around there melts that tiny bead of plastic away and settles it down. And uh, the construction's very straightforward here, actually. It's um, impressive, really, for Airfix. It's quite good. It all slots together. There's bags of detail there. And it's just what you want, really. So no complaints there. Uh, so I don't know what that is there. <laughs> some sort of oxygen tank, possibly. fuel. Well, not a fuel tank, but some sort of tank behind the seat. Um, and now we start with the uh, the chair. So we've got the frame going on the back there. Again, you can see the, the, the very nice uh, fit there. And that's perfect. You know, all it needs is, is a set of belts. Um, which in this case, it's actually quite different. And here you can see the two different chairs that I mentioned. So, there's your options. That's brilliant. You know, you can't ask for more than that, really. Now, again, parts for the cockpit, uh, it really does come together really, really quite nicely. Um, that's the control stick going in there, and it's got the, um, well, control levers, I suppose. I don't know what it would be, the, the, the rod going back there, uh, which goes under the chair, so it's a nice touch. Now, I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the chair, and the only one that I could see that fits uh, an AVG Warhawk was this one. Um, which is a resin seat and I noticed that they had those loops on the back now this has been so long I apologize I looked it all up at the time and I knew what it was but this build's been on pause for an awful long time so I've actually forgotten what they did but they're a kind of um, uh, they're tied to the back of the chair really so and there's something to do with something <laughs> who knows uh, let me know in the comments if you know what that's for so I'm just trying to make those up um, with a bit of stretch sprue here and uh, made that into a loop and then just using Tamiya Extra Thin um, glued it together in, yeah, make it look roughly like the picture if I'm honest uh, nothing more than that, just kind of gluing it on and hoping for the best and uh, it was a nice effect, it was something I wanted to add because I saw it there, I thought it would be quite good uh, to put in uh, a little bit fiddly here by the looks of it but I think we get there in the end and Tamiya Extra Thin is really good for this. Anything you want to do with Plasticard, stretch spr stretched sprue or anything like that, it's really uh, useful because it, it's got a, it bites into it very quickly. And um, those plastics, uh, so like Plasticard and stuff, seems to be quite a lot softer, so 
has an effect on it. And there you can see that's all I wanted to do. Um, looks the part, adds a little bit of something different in the back there. I'm just kind of measuring it up and make sure it all lines up now. So with that, that, that out of the way, the next thing I wanted to do was get the canopy mast up, which is something I always like to do early because it's a job I don't enjoy. So I don't want to get to it when I need it. I want it done and out of the way when I feel in the mood for it. So I've just used some washi tape there and um, cocktail stick around the panel lines and pressed it into them. And uh, ready for paint. Sorry, that was all the... Um, that was all the bits there ready to go and we're going to paint them with interior green uh, the Mr. Color version so that's 351 for US interior green and that went down no problem and I used uh, rapid thinner for that I think the Mr. Color rapid thinner I'm just using my wet palette there again we've got a video on the channel about how to make a wet palette if you want to know what that's about check uh, the description below and you'll see uh, where I've got it linked and with the Citadel paints, just the, the black paint, starting to touch in some of the details here. Um, so we're getting the handle on the control lever. Or control stick, sorry. And I, I like using Citadel paints for this sort of job. It's very good. They they, they work quite well, but and, and they're quite heavily pigmented as well. So... Um, I was quite happy to uh, utilise them in this uh, this moment. Obviously, it's nice to add a bit of colour, uh, even though black, you know, where, where it's all green, it's nice to add a bit of contrast, should I say. So that really comes into its own when you start painting up stuff on the side walls. It brings it to life a little bit then. And it's, uh, it's always worth doing um, as much as you can. Try and add a bit of detail because you, you never know how much is going to be seen and it's a, it's a relatively enjoyable part of the hobby, I'm sure. We all don't mind it and the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. So I find um, you know, going that extra mile sometimes is worth it. But again, you know, if, if you know it's not going to be seen or you're going to close up the canopy, then uh, equally, as much as I like to add a lot of detail, I, I do quickly rattle through it as well. So it depends on the build. Uh, this one I wanted to take my time because there was so much there. Uh, I was quite happy to go ahead and paint up as much as I could. And we've got uh, decals coming a bit later to add to some of these sidewalls to give you the instrument um, dials on some of... I don't know what they'd be, I, I guess, well, instruments on the, on the sidewalls. Uh, there's some sort of uh, gizmo that does something. And there we are with it painted up and it's, it looks a bit lumpy but it does self-level quite nicely. And that will level off as it dries. It dries quite fast being acrylic paint. Um, and here I think we've got the headrest I'm going to be painting up. We've got straps there on that tank and the tank itself could have been a different colour but uh, it's not, you don't really see it so I haven't painted it. It's simple as that. Um, like I was just saying, you know, I don't find, it, it's only worth uh, spending time on things that are going to pay off is uh, my personal view. If you're not going to see it, there's really no point spending a bit of time on that. Um, I'm trying to get a nice sharp line down the side there where it joins. And um, here now we've got the black bits all painted and I've painted in some of the wiring detail that's on there as well. Just painted that kind of brown colour. Didn't really know what colour to do it. And now we're going to gloss it up with Super Clear Free from uh, Mr. Colour. And that's thinned with self-leveling thinners. That goes down really nicely, gives you a good uniform gloss coat ready to add some of these decals I was talking about. So we've got an instrument panel um, decal all together and then we've got sidewall. Uh, decals as well which is kind of this look this part here for instance is, is a kind of warning um, plaque I suppose and um, this is the star of the show so getting all of those dials in uh, to the right place really uh, it takes some work but once you do it it's very effective as you'll see a little bit later I was really quite pleased with this as a decal straight out of the um, out of the box an instrument panel sorry straight out of the box I think it looks really good at the end and that solver set really got those decals melting in there. And here you can see they've sunk in and um, gone on to the different bezels and, and the raised parts everywhere they need to be. And it's, um, it's coming together. It's starting to look pretty good. So I'm relatively happy with that. And we've got different parts all over it. And another thing, I like to go on through the build and paint up all the bits as I go forward. So I, I just 
you know, get ready for the construction all in one go. Uh, so uh, uh, ingenious way of doing the gear bays, if you ask me. Uh, I think that's um, about the best way you can have handled that section. And then we've got the uh, air intake, I believe. Uh, which is the, the big chin at the front, makes the P40 very um, iconic. And that all slots in quite well, although, word of warning, I actually glued this too far to one side. So, I, I don't know what the answer is here, really. I suppose glue the front portion of that bit, the, the bit at the rear. Uh, the bit at the front goes in fine, and then this other section at the rear, which has got that swooping down long piece there, I've actually glued it too far to one side, so when you line it all up uh, with the wing underneath, uh, it's, it's too far to one side and it doesn't quite look right, unfortunately, but it's a small problem to have. So then we're on to uh, bringing it all together. It's a bit of a dry fit at the minute because I wanted to do some weathering, but I was just seeing how it was all going to go together. And there you can see it makes for an extremely detailed little... Uh, cockpit tub in there cracking stuff from airfix on this one you know they are hit and miss this is one of the hits i've got to be honest after building the whole thing and, and getting right to the end at this point when i'm talking to you about it it is a star of a kit it really is it's it's a cracker um very impressive the whole way so it's uh, it's well worth a shout if you're into uh, p40s it's worth looking at so a uh, little bit of a tricky fit to get that lined up it's it's more about just clipping it in really and knowing where you've got to do it so you just want to have a look on some of that side detail um, and make sure it sort of clips in uh, now this is one of the the few kits where it's actually beneficial to not have molded on seat belts or anything because the flying tigers one just had lap belts and they were quite specific so copying that picture earlier that i mentioned because it's hard to find a picture of any flying tiger uh, P40s. Um, I've done the best I can by making this out of masking tape and using wire to make the clasps and the um, uh, buckles. So uh, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it. It's a little bit overscale, but uh, I think the thickness of the strap is okay, but the wire is a little bit too thick. It could be a lot finer, but you know, it looks the part. It's just hinting at it really, and there you go, it's, it's in, in situ quite pleased with that and it, as you can see it's quite a um, uh, it's quite unique well unique I suppose that you don't have the shoulder harnesses and makes for a nice change as well so another one of the quirks of the flying tigers um, not many differences across the airframe that was really it the um, the, the chair and the uh, or the seat sorry and the harnesses is about the uh, the majority of it and then we're into the weathering so I'll leave you with a little bit of music while we do this but it's Now it's time to add in um, some glass uh, sort of lensing effect, I suppose, to some of these dials, uh, which is a, a really effective thing to do. And this is just using that glue and glaze, and as you can see, just, just dabbing it into where the actual glass part would be 
on the uh, on the dial and um, you know make it make sure it's a nice good lump there so as it settles down it goes clear and then it gives you the lensing effects which hopefully you'll see in the next shot so that's it you just got to let that dry and then as if by magic it looks like there's glass or, or in each of those dials and it's extremely effective now you do that after last that wants to be the last job before you uh, close the cockpit up because you can you know you wouldn't want to go over any of those dials with oils now that you've got the PVA in there would be my suggestion and I just want to add some pigments in there as the, these Warhawks were in very dusty areas so just a bit of scuffing um, down in the foot wells and it just given that effect to see there's a bit of dust kicked around in the bottom there which I'm sure there would have been I'm sure they would have been knocked about quite a bit judging by what they look like on the outside I haven't done any chipping that's another thing you could do here it'd be a classic uh, ex a chance to do some chipping but I don't like to do that myself I don't like uh, don't like heavily chipped models And there we go with that fit again, just to get that instrument panel in. Um, I would probably suggest doing it like this, doing it from one side and then clipping it in. I think the instructions have you put it in after you've put the two sides in, kind of putting it down and twisting it, but it didn't really work that well. And now we're ready to uh, go ahead and get everything joined up. So uh, you can see the fit going in there. It was just a glimpse of it at the bottom of the cockpit floor. It's uh, slotted, it's just great. You see that there? It's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant um, piece of engineering from, from Airfix all, all the way through this, really. Uh, this could be a weak point, but if you get it right, this does actually work pretty good. It's okay, you just wanna make sure you've got the front bit glued in and then the rear part glued in. Don't just chuck glue in there and, and expect it to fit perfectly, because it's not quite as good as that. But certainly, if you... Um, if you glue one end of it and then glue the rear end of it, say, uh, you'll find that it'll, it's actually okay. I didn't need to put any filler in there. I just needed to sand it down um, flush a little bit so it looked right. And um, these were impressive as well. This was a, I was a bit worried seeing this from Airfix, putting those, uh, what am I going to call that, the wing fillet. Um, I felt like that could have caused all manner of problems if it wasn't done correctly, but thankfully, it's engineered beautifully. As long as you glue it where it joins, uh, the wing snaps in. It's lovely. Amazing. <laughs> it's surprising because it's Airfix, I suppose. You know, that's a sort of Tamiya kind of uh, thing you'd expect. And seeing it in an Airfix kit is enough to make you uh, slightly worried. We can see good detail there, so we've got raised rivets all across that. Um, and now it's uh, it's time for the, the main event. So once the fuselage was together, I checked some of the seams just to see if there was any major work I had to do, and there wasn't, so that's good. Uh, so this rear, rear part of the wing absolutely snaps in there when you get it right. It locks in at the front, snaps in at the back, and then the two uh, upper parts of the wings slide underneath that wing fillet and snap in around the... Um, the aileron and it's really quite good it's extremely well done and it's it's surprisingly so so it you know you can i don't know what all the boxings of this are like i know airfix do have many problems regarding um quality control however this kit as a kit judged on its own is uh, is pretty good and here possibly you can see this this bit where the two holes i'm just i had my finger on it then it wasn't what i was pointing at it's just to one side, to the right. There, there you go. I've just stuck it too much on the right side of the fuselage. So it's better not to stick the rear of it. So if you could move that now and then cement it in, that would be the way the way you'd want to do it. Whereas I just glued it to the side of the fuselage. And obviously that's, um, that's something I've got to live with. But it being underneath, and this isn't a showpiece or anything, that was fine. So um, I did find one side of the wing uh, root join here. I had to add in some um, perfect plastic putty, which was the best thing there because I wanted to preserve the raised rivets and I didn't know what else to do really. So it was a tiny, tiny gap. Well, obviously, if I can use the uh, plastic putty, it must have been a tiny gap. Um, so that was that really. It was okay. 
Um, and then I've just gone around trying to sort all of these seams out here and there, uh, where I've used the sprue goo to uh, settle everything in and get it right using the trusty Infini sanding sticks and still just working on those, um, I don't know what they're called. I don't even know what begin to, what <laughs> to call them, but they're an iconic feature of the of the um, P40. So those lumpy bits, which are part of the wheel well. Um, now, again, a, a technique that a lot of modelers use is for the leading edge join, where you get a, you get a thin line there. Just using super glue on that, because it's not a... It's not a strong um, area that you, you know is going to take a lot of flexing or anything, so it's perfect to to use super glue. And the propeller hub. Now this actually is a bit of a head scratcher because there's only there's not many ways a, a kit company can go about this. So you know you're going to have to do something. But looking at the references, you don't have these gaps around um, the rear portion. So where that join join is there, that's not going to be there. There's not going to be any any gap there or if there is it's not certainly nothing like that it'd be a hint of it um, so there was only one real way to get a, go about that and that was to um, think about cutting the propeller blades off away from the hub uh, so that we could fit them afterwards and um, glue this section together and get all of that sanded sanded off so that's what I chose to do I've done this before on P40s um, and with a few other aircraft so the only thing for it is to take a deep breath and cut them off so using my razor saw trying to get as much of a flat cut as possible um, you just got to really go for it I suppose uh, and the flatter the cut the better because what you ultimately are going to be doing is drilling um, a hole in there and, and putting a rod or a pin in to take uh, the blade when you want to put it back into the hub. So uh, I've flattened those off now and just given them a bit of a, um, a mark here so that I know where the center line is, roughly. That's all. It's all by eye. I know you could do this a lot in a much better way, but me going by eye across um, you know, the vertical and the horizontal leaves me a point in the middle, which is roughly in the center. So after making a little mark, I get my... Uh, uh, drill bit and drill the hole to take the piece of metal rod and that's um, that's how we do that and I've already got the other two bits in and uh, checking those uh, so that when you put the blade on it's nice and flat and it joins up and when you're happy with that you can join it all together and uh, I actually left the it, for this th this way of doing it I left the the blades on glued the hub in joined the two parts together and then pulled them off afterwards. That's to make sure that then that center portion is in the right area. And then with super glue, I've just tried to uh, fill in all of those holes. Again, it's simply, it's not, a, not an area that's gonna be stressed. So super glue should be perfectly adequate for, for filling those gaps. There we go. Uh, that pin there as well, I don't know what that was. Um, for it must have been on it but it doesn't fit it was fouling this um, end cap so I just cut it off and then the end cap went on much better uh, I didn't actually film it I should have when it was sitting up a little bit um, and then another great feature of this model as well is the tail plane construction so you've got the horizontal stabilizers that are um, they're fitted so that you can only put one in one way and one in the other so you can't really mix them up and then when you've got those on, the elevators just sort of clip in as well. Um, it's obviously almost too tight there. And then to lock all of that in, um, you clip the rudder on and um, it holds it all together. It's all poseable. Um, I did choose to kick the rudder a little bit and the elevators down a bit. Uh, and then the last thing to do was drill out the exhaust. That's something I always like to do. These little things really lift a model. I mean, you'll notice in this one, I'm not actually adding any aftermarket. This is all uh, either building it out of the box or just a little bit of scratch building or super detailing detailing to enhance the, the, uh, the details and the finer points of the kit. Well, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, it's very easy to throw um, an Edward set at a, a kit and resin and on all this, that and everything else, uh, which I don't mind doing for one kit. 
and equally I happily build a kit out of the box uh, the next time so uh, it all helps with the skills I think it's worth doing you know it's trying to do these things instead of buying resin exhaust just drilling them out it was that was no problem and it was a bit of an exercise in trying to drill central <laughs> and then the, the other trick again uh, just using a bit of Tamiya extra fin to smooth out the hull and any small bits of plastic just uh, melt away when you do that and there we are so that brings this portion of the um, of the build to a close in the next one we'll get it painted and uh, deckled and weathered so hope you enjoyed that and um, until the next time please stay tuned um, check out the channel and I'll see you in the next video